Alright everybody, welcome back. This is Legit Lee, back again with another video for you. Today we're going to be messing around with Blender some more. I'm thinking in the nearby future I'm going to start doing Blender streaming. Nobody's actually ever done that. I thought it would be pretty cool because of the fact that, one, I'm not an expert at Blender. Uh, I like to use it a lot, yeah, but I'm not an expert at it. So there's a lot of things that I don't know, and Blender does, everybody talks about it, has a learning curve. But... I mean, you just have to keep working at it to understand it more, basically. It's just like anything you use. So, I felt like, in the future, I should just go ahead and start live streaming my Blender creation. So, people can watch what I'm doing and learn about Blender. And people who already know about Blender, if they see I'm doing something wrong, or if they're having uh, second doubts, or want to give me a suggestion... They can actually comment during the live stream and I can actually try their suggestions out to see if it works for what I'm trying to make at that time. So uh, definitely be um, subscribing and hitting that notification button so that we guys can see those um, videos coming up shortly. I'm thinking it'll probably be within the next like two weeks, three weeks or so, give or take. I'm thinking most likely on a Thursday or a Friday afternoon. So... Uh, definitely be looking out for those if you guys have been watching my stuff lately, especially if, like I just posted that video like a week or so ago about uh, the best Blender tool ever. And I had some comments, and there were po a lot of positive ones. I really liked that. And uh, really, there was I didn't even see any negatives, really. But um, uh, I did want to mention about that video that the Wacom or Express Key Remote, yes, there is mouses that you can use for blender that'll have the hotkeys like how people are commenting about the logitech and um so yeah you can use those but my reason for using the wacom express key remote is because i have a lenovo yoga 720p laptop it has wacom technology built into it for a stylus pen so i wanted to be able to use the remote and a a regular pen the stylus to actually navigate and use through blender so that video actually will be coming out within the next few weeks as well i'm actually going to be showing you guys how i'm using it and everything so definitely be looking out for that one also but uh, that was the main reason why i was using the express key remotes i know there's mouses that have like you know 20 different buttons on it and stuff and that you can program them to do whatever but um, I really just wanted something where I didn't have to worry about using a mouse or a keyboard. So like kind of free handing. So where I'm using the pen in one hand and the express key remote in the other. But um, nonetheless, let's go ahead and get into this video. Today I wanted to tell you guys that I've been looking into a lot of this robot arm uh, six access movements lately. And uh, I'm really digging them. The reason why, I mean, I have done some research in the past about it but i never even spoken to anyone about the stuff but um the reason why i'm so adamant on doing it now is because i uh actually have a reason for using it now um so i was watching kbhd uh you know marquise brownlee and uh he was talking about how he has a uh, robot six axis basically arm that actually he has mounted to his red camera to do some crazy movements right so i was thinking well i mean that would actually be pretty awesome to use for my youtube videos so like when i'm trying to show you guys like a 3d design like part that i made or something if i'm you know want to give some crazy shots that a robot can do pr to position everything so i was thinking well you know i can 3d design it uh, use it on Blender, like 3D design it in Blender, and then, uh, you know, print it out on one of my printers. I have three of them now, so I'm pretty much all good to go to print whatever. I'm not even worried about any of that. And uh, I will be doing a video about the printer that I just made. I have a few people waiting on it, so uh, I'm going to be doing that here in, within the next, I want to say, uh, two days maybe. And uh, so definitely be looking out for that one as well. I got like a lot of videos that are about to start dropping, guys. So definitely be paying attention. The reason I haven't been dropping them consistently is because I've been so busy working on like 10 other projects all at once. So, um, But uh, basically what's going on now is that I'm going to be designing this robot arm and 3D printing it and using it for a smartphone at first. So I have a Samsung Galaxy Note 8 right now. When I want to be able to use it for any phone, so like any of the iPhones or Galaxies or whatever Android phone you may have where it can be adjustable to that specific like uh, thickness of your phone, I guess. Uh, just like any regular 
phone to tripod uh, mount, universal mount. But um, so I wanted, I was thinking, you know, how I'm gonna go about this? Uh, what stepper motors would I be able to need? Because they they measure their stuff in newton meters, which consist of like you have to convert the newton meters to foot pounds, so that way you know how many pounds your phone is, which is not really any pounds. I'm pretty sure it's probably like a few ounces or something, but um, give or take. But uh, I wanted to make sure that the motors had enough holding torque, that the motors can... Uh, I would need them to be stepper motors because we want to have that really precise movement, just like how 3D printers can do. So I wanted to make sure that they were made with stepper motors for sure, and I wanted them to all be really easy to come across. So, like, all the parts that I want to make them out of is going to be basically 3D printer parts. So, like, roughly you want to spend around $100, I want to say. Like, you know, you get into stepper motors and the um the you know the controller so like an arduino um an arduino mega uh 2650 or you know like a ramps uh ramps board with it or the whole um M mks boards any of those uh rip wrap motherboards that you can buy that's pretty cheap like around 25 to 30 bucks for just a motherboard and then you know you can, most likely they'll come with the stepper driver so you won't really have to worry about that now if you're trying to change them then you have to worry about in the price increasing because you're going to wind up having, you know, like a, most likely if you buy the Ramps uh, MKS board or the Ramps 1.4 with the Arduino Mega, you're going to have most likely the uh, A4988s, I believe, the from Palulu. But um, they, they will be able to work for now. I'm just testing everything out first. But that's the reason why I would recommend you guys trying to go with uh, ramps board or the MKS or any of those ones that you can pop the stepper driver chip out of because then you can change it later if you wanted to get like the DM the DRVs I believe that's what they're called the DMVs some I forget the name it's like I have a few of them they're purple chips from Palulu as well they can handle more power so they're more better for like NEMA 23s I've been using them for like a NEMA 23 motor and um then you have, you know, the, the Trinamics uh, 2100s and the 22, 23, whatever the case may be. So you can change them later. So that's one of the reasons why I want to make it so where it is upgradable too. So there's a lot of factors you have to play into this. So um, I'm going to show you guys uh, what I've been looking at here. So this um, guy on Thingiverse here, the 4 Endures, uh, he made this uh, stepper motor mount for a bottom half of your actual arm so like this will actually be the part where rotates um all the way around to make the whole uh to make your whole robot move on the bottom here so right here it, it will turn the whole robot 103 100 360 degrees rotation and um so um, on the bottom you can see here he has a NEMA 17 stepper motor with a, a 3D printed gear attached to another 3D printed gear that has a most likely this is probably a 8 millimeter bolt with some uh, 6 608 bearings like skateboard bearings attached to it so the whole top half would move and they have he has a uh, let me just go back here uh, he has oh man what's going on let me just oh no I don't know why it won't let me change over. Let me just refresh this. I don't know what's going on with this right here. There we go. Uh, so he has where they're sitting on these bearings, right? These are, uh, I believe they're like the five millimeter diameter bearings. There's These are the ones that you get with like a 3D printer, like the V-slot bearings that you can use for any of the Creality um, roller guides. Um, so uh, that bearing right there is what's sitting inside that groove, the V-slots. So I was thinking, I wanted, I have a lot of those, the V-slots, but I don't want to use them because I want to use them in the future for like another 3D printer or a CNC machine, whatever the case may be, because I have a lot of those V-slot grooves and I don't want to damage them by taking out the the um, assembly, you know, like disassembling them. I don't need to remove the uh, actual rubber part that's on the outside of it. So uh, what I'm going to do is actually try to convert this to regular skateboard bearings because I have plenty of those from another project. Uh, that's the reason why I buy in bulk because I may need them for another project in the future. I always kind of plan out in the future of me needing extra stuff, so I kind of buy in bulk for things. I think I bought like 100 skateboard bearings for like 15 to 20 bucks off of eBay one day, 
and I still have like most of them. I'm only using a few for like uh, my 3D printer on a few things, like some of the custom mods I would use them for. And I was originally using them for like the big custom 3D printer, but um, I'm probably gonna wind up taking those out of there and then like just using them for something else in the future. But um, th that's what I like about the projects I do. If you guys ever needed to swap out any of your parts for something else, then you can always do so. Um, anyway, so the bearings right here, I wanna convert those from the five to an eight, because uh, we have the eight millimeter shafts. And uh, I basically wanna do this kind of the same thing, not exactly, because I don't like how it's sitting outside of the, the um, assembly here. I mean, I'm not saying he did a bad job. I just don't, I don't like it. I want everything to be inside. So that way, like if I wanted to paint it after I'm done, you know, 3D print it. Cause what I'm thinking, I'm gonna do two of these. Uh, first one will be for just a phone. And then the next one is gonna be a big scaled version where it would be able to hold uh, like a mirrorless camera. Cause like right now I have a uh, Sony a7 III uh, Mark III camera. Uh, it's a mirrorless camera. Only weighs like I have a 28 millimeter f/2 lens on it, so I like weighed the the pounds and everything of the camera just with like the battery and the the lens and the camera itself, and it came out to a little over two pounds. So I already know at that point that I'm gonna need about two foot pounds of torque, or if not more. So if I can get like eight, I want to say it should be able to hold that the um the whole assembly so like the bottom mode the bottom motor would be a stepper motor well all of them are going to be stepper motors but the bottom motor would probably be like a NEMA 34 most likely to actually hold that type of torque which right there you're looking at like a good 35 to 40 bucks for one of those but um so yeah I'm going to be using probably something like that in the future but for right now we're just sticking with uh, NEMA 17s and 23s because I have like two 23s and a bunch of 17s just lying around uh so we're going to be getting into this here. So I have Blender pulled up, and I haven't started anything yet. This is just fresh, just popped open the application. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just click out here because we don't need to work on any older ones. And the uh, first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, resize everything. So first, I want to go into orthographic mode by pressing 5. And then I'm going to do uh, 1 so you can see the front view. And I really, I should probably just be using my Wacom remote because this that will help speed some stuff up, I guess. So I'm going to plug in my USB receiver for it into my computer so I can go ahead and get that going. Uh, let's just do it in the front here. There we go. And I'll just turn it on. And let's see. One, two. Okay, there we go. So, yeah, we have front view side view top view good so i'm these are the main views that i'm going to be using anyway so i don't i'm not too worried about it now we don't need this cube since we're doing circular um stuff here we're going to need to change out the cube because obviously we want a circle we want to kind of replicate this a little bit but not exactly the same exact thing i'm using his information kind of but tweaking it to my perspective anyway so we're gonna do um I want to say I, I want to fix our viewing because right now you know we have to have everything measured out correctly so we're gonna already know we're gonna need to use measure it now I do have this is blender 2.79 I believe yeah 2.79 you can see it right here in the corner and um, but I do have blender 2.8 and uh, you know the the beta but I just I haven't been using it I'd rather just wait for an, a a more stable version and more updated version to come out first before I even fully use it. I mean, I'll test it out with my laptop when I'm doing the whole Wacom pen stuff, but because of the whole uh, grease pencil, but I just want to stick with uh, 2.79 for right now while we're working on this. Um, so yeah, I, I changed up my color background and stuff. There's plenty of tutorials. If you guys want me to show you how to do all this, like, you know, obviously this is not normal. I have like greenish going on over here with like a weird ass red orange magenta color anyway um yeah if you needed me to show you that just you know comment down below i don't mind giving you guys the information make a little part video for that it's probably only would take like a good five minutes to figure that out for you but um anyway right now we're gonna go ahead and change up 
the dimensions of the view that we're seeing. So it's not really dimensions, it's like the, the plane that you're seeing. You're, you're going to change your units here. We have presets, but you're going to go down to millimeters because I'd measure everything in millimeters. Pretty much everything I do is in millimeters. Now you see how when I clicked it, it kind of like did some weird zoom in and now the box looks completely uh, encased into these squares you see here too. And we are in the right um, degrees, so it's 0 0.00 is uh, 0 0.001 and then three zeros afterwards. That was metric and that is the exact frame of everything that we're viewing. So if you import anything off of Thingiverse or um, and like My Mini Factory or any of those uh, 3D designing uh, downloadable web app, uh, websites, you're gonna you're actually gonna be inputting the information correctly into your plane of view here. See, before it's used in like Blender viewing, like Blender units or something. It's weird. I forget the exact name, but basically, it's not exact re representation of the world that we are living in. So, um, if you want to make sure that your measurements are correct, then you have to make sure you change up your units. So now that we have that, we're gonna go ahead and go to display, and then right here, I already got it. You guys have to um, enable this inside of your pr uh, preferences here. So you'll go down to uh, where is it at? User preferences, and then uh, you want to go to add-ons, and then you will just type in measure it. So it'll be M E. You don't even have to type all of it out; it will start coming up. Uh, so wait, I think I'm spelling this right. Maybe I'm not, or maybe it's because I already have it. There it goes. Yeah. So uh, M E A S U R E. LT uh, measurement uh, measure it would be the uh, the only reason I s said it slows because I wasn't sure I, like it's kind of small I'm using a 4k television so I had to kind of zoom in a little bit I don't have bad eyes or anything but I'm kind of far away from my uh, computer screen but um so yeah the measure it tool is going to show that's IT for measure it duh. but um basically this tool will actually allow you to view your information so once you get it it'll be in display and then uh, you just go to measure it configuration here and I can pull this out a little bit so you guys can see a little more because I don't need all that view and plus let's go ahead and get up our N uh, we want to see the other information over here so you click you'll hit N on your keyboard and you'll be able to see your information over here and uh, also in a minute I'm going to show you how you convert uh, not convert but fix the view on that part so uh, First, we'll go ahead and get into edit mode. So I'm gonna get out of object. Let's get into edit mode really quick. So I just wanna show you guys this really fast because it's important. So uh, right now, we're gonna click, or I'm gonna hit A, deselect everything. And let's go ahead and do regular line. So we're gonna just grab each vertice on that plane right here. You see how it's highlighted white. If I zoom in a little bit, you see that white line. We selected that plane are those those vertices that whole um, side of, of the face and um, I'm gonna change it because I deal with 3d printing so I'm used to which you should get used to as well to the whole XYZ plane which is on blender you can see it clearly uh, so Y is gonna be green and then you have uh, red which is uh, X and then blue would be your Z axis so up then right our left and then front and back or front and back and um, so I'm changing the color for this to show you guys so right now I'm gonna change it to blue not this you'll see what I mean in a minute and I'll do a separation I'll separate it let's just say one separate one and then my font size I like them kind of big so I'll go with 50 each time I'm doing it so then you're gonna hit segment but you don't see anything, right? But it did pop up down here. So now we have a cube and it's using meters, but we want to use millimeters, not meters. So that got changed. So now we're on millimeters. Let me go ahead and pull that out a little bit so you can see that too. And then, um, so you still don't see it yet because you have to show it. So you have to click show and then there you have it. Now you can see what that size is of the cube. So now we're at two millimeters in the width of this. So this is two millimeters long on this directional plane, which is the x-axis. 
and the same will be consisted of each axis. So because it's a complete square cube, it's correct all around. So we're going to do uh, Y would be green. So we'll just hit green. Now that we hit show, you don't have to remove it. It will always be shown unless you hit hide, then you can't see it anymore. So we hit segment and there you have it again. Got the two millimeters on the Y and now our Z in the front here. We'll go ahead and hit uh, the blue. So we'll just go to blue and hit segment. So now you have X, Y, and Z showing the uh, full width of your object. But um, so that was just a quick demonstration. The reason why I'm showing that is because now that we're going to be knowing where in our 3D plane of view our measures are, now we can actually get started on making the whole robot stuff. And I already kind of got a little head start on you guys when it came to this because I use uh, Tinkercad a lot. And uh, the reason why is because it's super quick and simple for me. Blender obviously takes a while if you really want to get everything set up right. And uh, I just, whenever I'm trying to like, I, I instantly have these ideas in my head and I have to like really quickly design them. I mean, obviously you see all these on here and we're only on page one. So like... Literally, I'm always designing something, and um, I, I'm always having to, like, really quickly put it out here or, like, try to get it out of my head so I can save it for later. But um, there's a lot of designs in here, guys, that I have not shown anybody yet, so don't, like, even try to look at this just yet. <laughs> but um, I would use Tinkercad for, like, my basic, like, let's just design something really quick. But if you want, if me right now, I want to make sure my stuff is looking really legit and professional, I'm gonna, I will use Blender. So, I mean, obviously I've been using Blender more, but I would like to use Blender even more than, I like, if I had the ability to do so, or if I felt like it was the quickest, then I wouldn't even use Tinkercad anymore, but it's just too convenient for me not to. Um, so, anyway... Right now, this is kind of the little, this is kind of like a blueprint schematic of what, like, I'm just throwing out ideas here, but, um, so none of this is, like, set in stone. So I imported, I, I go to Thingiverse a lot, I just, like, you know, dra grab a design from somebody, so right here we have a NEMA 17 stepper motor, then we have a NEMA 23 stepper motor, and that's a G2 uh, uh, GT2 pulley gear that's uh, for the NEMA 23 stepper shaft and uh, then I have a little uh, 8 millimeter um, bearing here skateboard bearing skateboard bearing and then we have the ramps 1.4 with the Arduino Mega attached I got all these from uh, another other youtuber uh, not youtubers but other thingiverse users so none of these I'm claiming are mine I didn't design any of that I'm just using their design to kind of position where I need my design at. So that's kind of a good reference. If you guys ever was trying to build something and you're trying to piece in parts, but you're not sure exactly how the parts go or the dimensions of the parts and everything, you can actually most likely look it up on Thingiverse and then download it and then put that information into your 3D design sketch where you can actually use their measurements for everything. And it works out fantastically. I've never had an issue with it. Most of these guys know exactly what they're doing when it comes to designing, so uh, kudos to them. Anyway, so right here you can see I have this big bottom half here, which would be something like this, part, bottom part. And uh, like I mentioned, this is just a quick, not trying to do anything with this really, just to see. And uh, so I had put a hole down the bottom with a little uh, offset to actually line up the actual uh, skateboard bearing so then I have you know eight millimeter uh, threaded pipe or rod or whatever in the center and uh, then I was gonna do like another one for the top so like this part right here would actually be a complete encased you know cert, uh, system and uh, so the bottom of this part would be the bottom of this part right here so they're kind of sitting on each other so it kind of would keep on spinning and then we would have like a bolt or hex nut that actually attached to it so it just spins freely inside of here but the reason why I'm not doing it for sure in Tinkercad for the whole 
I um, designing is because you can see here Tinkercad when they give you the whole design so like if I brought in a cylinder here it's not giving you complete circular uh, design here it's, it's like it's hexagon ish you know like it's I don't like that I want my stuff to be very circled so I need to make sure it's a sphere or a complete circle I don't need any of these lines here because if we're spinning those little points can smack in the inside of my design here as you can see it, it has these like walls we don't want walls we want it to be nice and curved so I can't really work with Tinkercad on this design but I will be able to do it in Blender so um, basically right now what we're going to start doing I'm going to jump into Blender let me just back up a little bit here so we're going to go back into Blender, we're going to select all, hit um, double tap A there, and we're going to delete this. We don't need the cube, this was just a test to show you guys. So I'm going to hit X to delete it, uh, we'll just delete vertices, face everything, because once we hit that, it's all gone. And then we can delete all those too, because we don't have them anymore. So now we're going to go back into our regular mode here, which is front view, you know, side view, front view. And uh, we're gonna go back into object mode because we're gonna have. I'm gonna grab an object really quick. So first, we're gonna hit. I believe it's Shift A. Yeah. So we're gonna Shift A, and uh, add a sphere, a cylinder. I think that's a solid one, if I'm not mistaken. But you can't see it. It's added, but you can't see. It. You need to scale it down because it's like in the plane of view that you can't see since we changed up our preset units to see the whole world. So. All we have to do is hit S, and then we'll scale it in, and you see how big it is? That's, Blender is like a massive world or something. It's so big uh, compared to, like, millimeters and things. So, like, if you think about it, like, this cube is blacking out our whole entire screen right now, and I only scaled a little bit. So if we scale again, we're going to keep on going down into the complete circle. So there you have it. That is our uh, sphere uh, cylinder so we're gonna go back into object mode here we're probably gonna have to flip rotate all this because I think it's laying flat so let's go ahead and see that I'm gonna go to our side view here what's that hold on front view okay no it isn't okay we're right so it's good it, it came out fully flat and straight so we're in uh, front view mode right now we're gonna drag this up we want to make sure it's touching the line of your um, of your floor here so you see that blue line right here that's not like these light blues like a dark bluish color kinda wanna make sure you have that set up perfectly so I'm just bringing it up just a little bit uh, a little more that's too much uh, God. right here I'm pretty sure there's like a key I can hit or something some hot key and you guys are probably uh, ch killing me in these comments right now <laughs> about what I'm doing or not doing but you know any I don't take those comments to offense because I actually would appreciate the help so thank you but um so right now we have our cylinder right now and uh, if we go back I think into object mode we can actually see if we select the cylinder now we can't I can't change it yet I don't think no so I have to delete let me just undo this Okay, so we can't redo now. All right, that's just great. Uh, we're still in orthographic. Let's get out of that. Oh, man, hold on. Did this change my world view to meters, millimeters? There we go. Okay, so I put it back to normal. Anyway, select that one. We're going to select this guy. We're going to head and delete him. And uh, the reason why I had to do this over again really quick is because I need to show you guys. Right now, the cylinder that we have is, uh, is I mean, it's okay, I guess. But, I mean, you can't see it. But uh, right now, we're going to scale it down, like I was mentioning, so you can see the cylinder. But the reason why I'm getting this redone is because I need to show you something here. Uh, so we're going to scale it down, bring it down, bring it down, scale it again, bring it down, scale it again, bring it down. So there we have it. So we had it brought down, and you can see that it's changing, like, the vector and everything. You can see, like, the XYZ plane and all that stuff. But, um, if I could hit view, no, no, where is it? I just seen it a second ago. 
God. I should have just did it already, but I'll show you here. Um, right now, you guys can see that this cylinder still has those weird kind of blocky circle like formation, and we don't want that. So the more vertices you add to the block, the better. So there's like a resizing of, of these right here. So, I mean, you can do it with uh, like a control B, I think it's, uh, it, you can select vertices and, and set them there's a lot you can do in here but um, I'm just gonna go back to remove that there it goes and then we're gonna go ahead and hit front view again now we're still we didn't change anything else we'll hit control on the shift a and get that cylinder back and then right here see it's when it first comes up this whole add cylinder you can add if I can just back out, maybe I can find it. Where in the, okay, yeah. So yeah, that cylinder is pretty massive. Anyway, um, you can add more vertices and you really want to make sure that you kind of have uh, four vertices for everything. It's basically a complete square. So if we're at 32 uh, vertices right now and we keep adding, it will add more. So we want to, I really, I, I guess we should just double it. I, I don't know, to be honest, like, cause we're gonna be doing a whole lot in here. I mean, I can go down to just like four and start off there and then just add them um, as I see fit. It's just, I don't know how well this really works when it comes to Blender and the 3D printing uh, information. I mean, I know I can just like, you know, set it up, print it out, see how it works, but I'm used to working in fours, so any, four shaped you know information is probably best for me so um, we can do this whole cylinder and it probably would work out just fine using bowlings and you know just taking away from the original image here or the, set, um, the original cube and everything but I just I'm not sure how I should go about it so that's the reason why I don't use blender as much it's just there's so much you going on with it that you don't know which route to take so I'm just going to double this and see if that works. And if you guys have any suggestions in the comments, you know, definitely hit me up down there. So I'm going to hit 64. And then you can see how it kind of just smoothed itself out there. So now we're more of a circle than we are a hexagonish looking. So it looks a little more uh, renowned and pronounced. But, uh, so yeah, that, that's what we're going to go with. You know, if you guys had a different suggestion, I'll try that later. So thank you for future, uh, for the future people as well to be commenting there. And, um, so now that we have that, we're going to go ahead and scale it down because we're going to have to definitely scale and bring it down to whatever we can bring it down to here. So we're going to hit that number one and then go back up. And it'll scale down a little more. I know it's probably have to rescale it all the way up to size, but I kind of like working in a small area first and then going big instead of starting big and then having to go small. So um, now that we have our cylinder in here with all these vertices and making it look as really smooth and, and nice, um, we're gonna go ahead and get our uh, information in. So what I mean by that is we need to get our uh, blueprint going for the most part we need to know what these sizes are like how fat this cube is and everything so I mean this uh, cylinder so we're gonna go back into object mode hit tab and you can see each individual vertice we're gonna start with this one down here so we just click on that individual one and then on the same axis on the other side you can tell because your blue line will be right on it so you'll hit shift and click and then there you have it you now you selected both of those vertices on each opposite side uh, one here and then that one over here it's a little white you may not be able to see it but it's there anyway so now we're gonna go back to this we're gonna go and put ourselves back into red here we're at 14 we don't want that and separation I'll put a one on still uh, I want to have 50 for the size or so do 50 and then we'll hit sediment and there you have it so look how small that is and we're in the correct view it's oh wait no we're not are we oh wait one zero yeah yeah well that i believe that's right hold on 
So that's oh, okay. It's using this is using meters. That's why I'm throwing off because of that. I gotta fix this. I forgot I undid a lot. There we go. So that's that's correct. We had to change the cylinders information to view meters instead of um, uh, millimeters instead of meters. Anyway, so right now we're at sixty point four nine millimeters in the whole circumference of this circle. So, and that is actually okay, but I believe my, I started off at like 100 and something, uh, 200 for the overall, because this NEMA 17, uh, 23 motor is in there, and that's the one that we are going to want to use for the bottom, because there's going to be a lot of torque, guys, like a lot of, there's going to be so much stress on that bottom motor, because if you look at any of these here, Oh, these bottom motors have to spin on an axis and some of them just sit outside so like this one is like an open source one that everybody's uh like you know starts off with or whatever you can see the bottom bottom turning motor is actually outside of the whole case and that's tacky you know like i mean i'm not mad at them they did a good job and these are some big 23 motors here uh, so they do really well. It's just I don't like the outsideness of all this. But you can see in here they have those rollers too right here. If you can't really see them, they're kind of far away. But uh, if we kind of get a little, there we go. You kind of can see it. It's hard to see them. But those are those rollers that I was just showing you a second ago. Those are like a five millimeter diameter bearings. Um, so yeah, these guys do good. I mean, I got no. I don't have any beef with them or anything. It's just I don't like my motor sitting outside of the whole uh, thing being driven by a belt. I want everything inside, you know, to make it look nice and neat and professional. I'm not saying theirs don't look professional. I just feel like it'll be easier to and cleaner look for me. Um, so what I'm going to do is resize this. Now that we have the information here, it will change once we resize everything. So what we're going to do is hit double A again. And then uh, we're going to resize everything by hitting S. Uh, so we're going to bring that out. I want to have about 200, which another thing um, over here, you can actually see, you can change your X, Y, and Z dimension to transform this. So once I'm, while I'm scaling, you guys can look over here. You're going to see these numbers change a lot. So if I hit scale, you can see they're like jumping. And it's because we're changing the shape of everything. But it's, since we're doing the whole entire uh, cylinder, it's not going to show all of it. It's just like glitching over there or whatever. But we're just going to try to get to 200. Um, I'm going to scroll in a little bit because um, if you guys ever use measure it, I know it can be a little difficult to get exactly like the numbers you want. So like the 200 or 100 or 150 because they're always giving you those extra little numbers at the end there. That uh, kind of would upset you because you want to make sure everything is really precise, especially if you're using like a, you know, 3D designing a 3D printer part or uh, obviously this six axis arm. Uh, so you're going to want to make sure that you zoom in. The more you zoom in, the lower, the more accurate you can get those numbers. So see right there, I barely moved and it's like jumping all over the place. So I can scale, keep scaling in, scaling in and like bring this over a little bit so I can see my number. Uh, so we just scale in some more and hit scale and then you see how now it's like one at a time because you're zoomed in so far that it you can actually adjust precisely where you want your stuff at. So now we can, you know, zoom out a little bit here. We're going to go back to the first view. We're going to bring our uh, cylinder back up because once we scaled it kind of moved it out of the floor plane here. And uh, that looks kind of flat, I believe. I think that's okay. Anyway, so now that we have that done, we have our 200 millimeter circumference. I guess that's what you would call it. I'm not 100% familiar with all these terms, guys. I'm, I never went to college for this. I'm just kind of good at designing things. I just haven't went to school for it, so bear with me on all these terminologies. Anyway, so we're going to do um, A again to deselect everything because now we're going to want to know how high we are right now. So we're going to select, you can just hit this one. You don't have to select individual vertices. If you're trying to figure out a cross plane, then you're going to want to hit individual vertices. But if you are just trying to get the line width of like one whole area from top to bottom, then all you have to do is just hit this one right here, which is a line of uh, the edge. We're just going to hit the edge and then 
change it to blue because we're on the Z axis now. And uh, we're going to hit sediment. And there you have it. That's 200 and that squared, uh, that and the height. And then, uh, then we're going to do the Y, which is pretty much going to be 200 as well. But this one you do have to jump. So we're going to have to get our individual vertice. Deselect everything and then hit the vertice right there and then the vertice on the back end as well with hit and shift so i forgot to hit shift there we go and then um, we're gonna go ahead and hit this to green and sediment and there you have it so now you know the xyz of your your information but see since this is covering over the green we're gonna want to move that out of the way so we can see so i'm going to edit this information by moving it over so we're going to set the position to actually move over on the x if i can do it hold on there it goes so now we can move it out of the way and then even though the uh x axes i want to move that out of the way too so we'll hit y and kind of drag it downward uh, so all you have to do is click on it and then pull it. You just keep holding on to the clip button and just drag. And so then now we have that. And I'll even do it for the blue. The blue's kind of looking purple over here, man. No. Let's get that blue. There we go. And uh, so for the blue, we want to move it on the X because we're moving it over. So click on it, drag, and when we push it out of the way. So it won't be in the way of our stuff. Now, now we have each individual axes set up properly. We're going to deselect everything. I'll hit one. I'm not even really using this remote right now because it's. I'm just trying to speed this up. I don't want this to be like a 40 minute video, which I'm pretty sure is probably already running on that. So apologies, guys. Um, now we're going to want to make sure we're bringing this down because we don't need 200 millimeters for the height. Uh, I don't even think my thing is anywhere near that design. Uh, right now, where are we at? Uh, I just wanted to barely scrape the top here because I don't. I want it to be as compact as possible, but I don't want it to actually smack against anything. So I was kind of, you know, bringing in all the motors and everything to see where my height was. Uh, so we're at 80 millimeters. So we're gonna want to do the same for this one in Blender. And uh, so what we're gonna do is hit. We deselected everything, so you can hit A twice. Once A is hit, you'll see it highlighted. Then A again will deselect everything. Now we're going to hit Z to wireframe mode, and then B to select all the top vertices. And then all we got to do is just hit uh, the Z um, arrow, and then just drag down. Because now we're going to bring it down to the height that we need. So we're going to bring it down to 80, at least close to it. Then we can zoom in and then make sure that it is at 80 exactly. And if you have issues with trying to see it, all you have to do is just drag this guy right back to the center if you want. And then you'll be able to see um, where your line is. Because once you zoom in, it kind of moves, you know. So we want to make sure that we can see the information here. So I'm just going to move it over as close as I can get it. And then try to drag it down a little more. See, that was too much. Uh, so we're going to have to zoom in. And then we can bring it up on the Y plane. So if I can bring it closer and closer. I mean, this is how I'm doing it. I know there's probably a way to do this better, but I mean, this is like literally the best way I've found on my own how to do this. Uh, so we're gonna bring it up to, if I can get it to the 80, that's 80.1. I mean, that's close. I still feel like we can do better. I want that 80. I don't know why I want it so bad, but I definitely want that 80. So let's see if we can zoom in just a little more. Oh, God. All right. Let me see. Right here. Let's see if it's showing up here, right? Uh, so Z, it went down. Let's just hit. If that's 6 1.6494, how about we do 1.65? 1.65. I don't even know where it went now. Okay, that definitely isn't good. Undo that. What is this measured on? I don't know if this is using... Oh, wait. It's using local. We need global. Centimeters? Millimeters. Local, I guess. 
Let's see if we can, where's the, there it goes. So we can actually adjust it here. Oh, too much, and there we go. So that's perfect. Now we're at 80, or uh, 80 millimeters high. And then we can reset your, um, your alignment here by uh, bringing it back over and bring this. We could just set it to zero and it will just go back to where it was at originally. Then we can just remove it again later. Uh, so if we hit one, so that was zero position. We just move it over, bam. So now we're at 80 millimeters high for your um, cylinder. And we're still 200 by 200 for everywhere else, which is great. That's where we need it at. Now this inner loop here, which we'll go back to this one, uh, we have a another cube here, uh, a circle or a cylinder, whatever you want to call it. This one's at 180, so we're taking 20 millimeters off of the original design. So if we go back here, uh, we'll deselect all those, put this back from wire frame to regular mode, and uh, now we can add another cylinder. So we're going to go back to object mode, hit tab and we're going to shift a and we're going to add a cube see you want to go in object mode because you're adding another object you don't want to add an object within an object because then you can't do a boolean modifier so we're going to do our cylinder again and we are at 64 vertices which is correct that's what we need now we're going to scale it bring it down because it's too big there we go bring this up so we can see it because we're going to use this to cut away at this and we're probably going to have to duplicate this probably we'll, we'll see in here in a second but um so we're going to go into back into object mode we have this one selected we're not on this one you see how i kind of red lined this uh, around the edges and you see the circle and arrows so right now we're selecting this one so we're only working on this object there you go. So now you see the wireframe or the view. And uh, so now we're going to do the same thing we did for this one. We're going to get the measurements right. So this will kind of speed up a little bit. Now that I showed you most of the information for the first one, we can kind of work quicker at this. So we're going to go to top mode uh, so we can see everything. We're going to click that vertice, select this one, click that vertice. We're going to hit it to the red and sediment. There you go. So we know where it's at. And we'll do the same thing. We don't really need to do it for the Y because you're going to be the same position or circumference. As if it, it should be all the same, basically. Uh, so let's edit this one. Uh, we're going to move that over so we can see it. Right there is fine. And then uh, same thing for the height. Let's go back to this plane view here, first view. Deselect everything. Click this one. Move over to right here and we're going to turn that blue so we can see the height because we're definitely going to need to see the height select that and there you have it it's going to be the same all around but you're going to be changing it that's why you need this information so um we're going to deselect all everything again and then go back into a uh, scaling mode basically you're going to hit scale so we're going to want to make sure it's at 180 remember that 180 for the bottom here so we're going to go back here 180 it so we're going to hit select all hit scale we're going to actually i need to bring it closer to this dot and pull away from it see now that got us close and fast and uh, this won't allow us to change it up here so we're going to have to actually move it ourselves down to that 80 as best we can and we can move that over like i said our axes can be moved so let's move them if we have to wait i'm on the right one i think i am yeah there we go so we just zoom in and then zoom in so we can see and we're going to up oh, too much too much hold on uh, right now right there perfect see now we have that and it's all around the same as that uh measurements now we're gonna deselect everything wireframe this again because uh, I don't need 
all of that exactly. I'm going to select the top. I don't know how many millimeters thick this one is. What is the height? We're at 20. Okay, 20 millimeters. That's not bad. We can deal with 20. Besides, if it's a little thick, it's probably better because it's obviously it's going to be rolling and you want to kind of have it a little thick. Now, I would recommend if we're printing this to do a few uh, solid layer lines. So like the top and the bottom, I would say probably like a good I, w I would do six. I'm probably going to do six, like even like a good six solid layer lines, because if you think about it, we're going to we're going to be rotating a lot in the future on these planes. So you're going to want to make sure that the filament can actually withstand it without grinding into it. I mean, yeah, we were rolling on skateboard bearings, but over time it can be, you know, the filament or the, the PLA is going to wind up or whatever filament you're using is going to wind up being deteriorated over time. It's just like anything, just dry rotting or whatever. So, um, or at least any rubber or plastic. So we're going to go ahead and hit B. Uh, so as we deselected everything, we're just going to grab the top, drag it down. We're going to go down to, uh, I want to do, what happened? Where is my, oh, okay, wait. We got to get our stuff back in over here. There it goes. I don't know why this is, yeah, that's right. So this is a uh, Z, so we need to see. And we need to make sure that we're at 20. So we had to move that over so we can see it. So we're bringing it down and let's see, 20, 20. Wow, that's so small. Compared to everything else I've been working on, it's kind of small right now to me. Uh, so we'll go back up here. This will help a little better and faster. Bring it down. So you can do it like one, 0 0.1 millimeter at a time. Zero, point zero 0.01 at a time. And there you have it. So now that's done. We'll hit A to deselect all that. Z to get out of the wireframe mode. And that is our top right there. So we have this one. We're going to uh, go out of this mode. We're going to go to object mode. And since we already have this one selected, we'll do, sh uh, sh I think it's shift D to duplicate. And we're going to do it on the Z axis. So we'll just bring that up. You hit Z to duplicate and bring it on the axis. But see, two different objects. Now they're not in the same plane of view. So. You're not in the same as that object. They're not in the same uh, object location. There are two separate objects. So now we're going to want to do is a bowling modifier. And what that is, really, we should probably, since this is going to be our top, we can actually scale this back up a little bit because I want to actually have it cut away from this one. So we're probably going to have to scale it up now that I think about it. So. Let's just go back into edit mode here. Sorry if I was yawning, guys. I'm a little tired. I've been doing a lot of research lately. Uh, so deselect all. Hit this one. We're going to go ahead and bring this one up. Uh, let's just bring it up to around 80. It doesn't matter because we're going to just drop it down. So A. And then select all the vertices, and you're going to drop it down, so let's just say to this point right there. And uh, since it's in the same exact position as the other one, uh, it should be dead center. So you don't even have to worry about trying to center it. So as soon as we hit the Boolean modifier and actually clip it away from this uh, design, it shouldn't have any issues with um, like being off-centered or anything. So if we go to top view, you can see that information too, so you can see how round it is compared to this one over here like if we do top view on here you can see like it's not as round as this one is right here and uh, so yeah we have that one and we dropped it down a good little ways down I think I have six millimeters from the floor up that's uh, right here in this floor plane before it actually touches the bottom uh, so I'm gonna see if I can replicate that as well it's hard to do that one exactly because there's no vertice over here. So we kind of have to go off of what we see from these angles. Because I can copy, like jump from this 
vertice over here to this one up here. So, but uh, right now we're just trying to take away this shape from our original shape. So I'm gonna go to object mode again and uh, hit wire uh, regular view so out of wireframe. And now we're gonna do a Boolean modifier. So we'll go to this wrench, add a modifier, go to Boolean. And uh, so we're going to do, I believe it's you click on the one that you want to take away from, if I'm not mistaken, I have to double check. Anyway, so I'm gonna click this one and then we're going to, oh wait, no, it's this one and then we use that one to take away. So I'm gonna click our original, oh wait, I hate when I do that there. So uh, we're gonna click on this one. That's our original, we'll add a modifier to this one. Boolean. We're going to not intercept, but difference. Difference means to take it away. It's just subtracting it from this one. And uh, so then we have the difference. We're going to click this little uh, eye drop tool here and we're going to click on that. So now we have that one uh, selected. So we just hit apply. And there you have it. So now if we just I'll click on there you can't see it yet but if you click on there and hit x delete it and there you have it because it saves your original uh object but you don't need it anymore after you removed it so now we have our circle down there so we're getting really close to looking like uh this one already which it didn't even take that long to do and the reason it, i would have been able to do it a whole lot faster but i'm trying to explain some stuff to you guys while i'm doing it so and um Anyway, so now that we're done with that, we can bring our top down here and just see it'll just sit flush right inside of there without any issues. Looks good. It looks really good. And uh, you can always add a uh, subsurf modifier as well. Uh, it will smooth out these lines to flawlessness. So we're, we'll, we can do that later. Right now, what we're going to do is uh, get another one of those... Um, spheres or s cylinders in and uh because i know a sphere is a complete circle like a ball but i'm going to get a cylinder in and actually measure out our bottom part down here so um down here we have this little offset which has our bearing sitting inside so we need to replicate that and then on the shaft, um, I'll probably have like two bolts holding a uh, another teeth pulley that will pull and move the shaft around, which will then pull and move this base around. So it's pretty much just making a shaft for this uh, situation. And um, on the out in the inside, we're gonna just pretty much take away the whole sides of uh, when we're trying to mount these. Uh, bearings on the sides you know how this one was that you've seen they had those bearings right here sitting in the corners uh, like close where it can spin on top of that so we're going to implement the same thing but with the uh, 608 bearings the skateboard bearings that you can get really cheaply I mean you can get those other ones too but everybody uses skateboards for the most part I mean not everyone but they're, they're easier to come by so uh, and since I have so many let's just do skateboards why not Anyway, uh, so we're going to do another object here. So we're going to hit shift. We're already in object mode, so we hit shift A. Uh, cylinder, bring the cylinder down one more time here. Oh, don't do that. There we go. Uh, bring it down again and again because we're going to need to make this one super small because it's going to be only 8 millimeters. I mean, uh, 22. I believe it's a 22. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, let's double check that. Why not? So... Yep, 22 size all around, so that's what we need. So we're gonna do that. Bring this over here. Up, move, up, move. And we're gonna go back into object mode. Let's go ahead and grab our information really fast. So I'm gonna stick on this one, deselect everything. Uh, we're gonna go to top view mode and then move over so we can see. Okay, that's looking good. So we need this one because that's the one that intersects with all of them. 
this is Z, so we're going to go ahead and hit segment. It's already blue, so that's good. And then we're going to get the bottom ones now. So we'll do this, move over, and we're going to deselect everything, hit our individual vertices, uh, one right here, and then if I could find the other one. So that's the only difference between all this is like it's hard to find the information you need. So reverse top view I feel like we should do. So bottom view is we're clicking the bottom vertices to see the information. But since this one's in the way, because we have our big bulky one in the way, I'm probably just going to have to try to eyeball it. I'm pretty sure I can handle it though. Matter of fact. I go to the top, hit top view. Yeah, there we go. That'll work. And then we just hit side view. And there you have it. So we have that one selected. So that's good. And then we'll do a reverse side view. I don't even know why I didn't think of that before. And then we just hit shift and select. And now we have both vertices selected on each side. And now we can go ahead and hit segment. See, that's what I'm saying. I'm learning as I go, too, guys, so you're going to have to, like, bear with me here. Like I mentioned, I'm definitely not an expert on this. Uh, so we have the bottom and the top, and now we just need front and back, which is the X, uh, the Y axis. We don't really need it, though. I'm just going to leave it because uh, we're only going to be messing with the uh, height. So the Z we definitely need and the X we're going to definitely need, so we're just going to skip that next part. And uh, so we're going to... Hit A, double select it twice, bring it down. I'll actually bring it up because we need to be at 22. So we're going to bring that up to 22. Super close. Okay, overshot a little bit. Come on. We can leave it right there for now. And then um, we're going to go down uh, to one, the front view mode. A, select. B, Oh, wait, no. ZB. Grab the bottoms. And the top. Why did it grab everything? That made no sense. Alright. So, we need B for the bottom, because I want to select the bottom vertices. And then the top. Okay, yeah, that, I guess that does make sense. I don't know what I'm thinking. I'm sorry, guys. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and just scale this down to the one that we need. Uh, I want to get... Let's move this so we can see. Let's see, once we zoom in, it's going to show us. I'm just really meticulous when it comes to my stuff. I don't want, I don't want to have any problems, you know. Like I want to make sure that everything is sitting in place correctly, and there won't be any misinformation. Numbers don't lie. So, crap, hit the wrong button. Okay, and then we just zoom in a little more. Scale. No. There we go. Come on, where are you? See, this is the this is the time where I need you guys to kind of say, hey, you ha you can do this to get it to get your exact position of that 22 that you're trying so hard to get. All right, so we have that. Let's move this out of the way. Let's put it back at zero. Come on, man. Zero. There we go. All right. So now that we have our 22 millimeter. Uh, circumference here we're gonna need to get our other one set up properly so we're gonna have the height set for seven so we go back here uh, now we're going to hit Z A actually no Z B oh, let me get my thing back there we go and uh, then we're going to drop it down to 7. So we just bring it down. And this 
up here will help. Okay, and seven. All right, so now we are at seven millimeters high and 22 millimeters in diameter. And now we're going to get another object here because right now what we're doing is creating the bearings. And I mean, granted, we probably don't even have to do this because I'm pretty sure I could just get that bearing off of there, off of Thingiverse, and bring it into here. But I want to show you guys how this works. So, so we're going to deselect all that, go into object mode again, add another cube. I mean, another c cylinder. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and scale. Drop it down, drop it down, drop it down, bring it up. And we're going to make this one the 8 millimeter hole to kind of represent the diameter of the shaft that we're going to be using. I don't know why I'm feeling so tired right now. I guess because I didn't really sleep much. Anyway, uh, now we're going to go back into object mode again. Let's get those coordinates guys so we gotta get that information oh man i keep hitting cabs a lot for some reason what's wrong with me that tiredness man that's what it is your boy is tired today for some reason why why do i gotta be tired of making a video i know you guys are getting bored of me talking so damn much all right um so wireframe mode we're gonna deselect everything uh yeah let's do that way I need to grab our top vertices. Oh man. I don't know if I have that right. Hold up. Is this the one I've been working on? Okay. Yeah, I have to double check that. Alright. Alright, so we go to view one. Okay, so that makes sense. Alright, so now we do reverse. Grab that dot right here. And it's hot in here. Alright, uh, sediment. Oh, look at that. Almost. Almost perfect, like 8.33. I couldn't try to do that better if I tried, you know, like, I don't I didn't even think I had it that close. Anyway, um, now we're going to do this one, and yeah, we'll do that one. I need to do this blue. There you go. And now we go to front view mode, select all, scale. Ooh, wait, wait. I just had it a second ago. There you have it. Eight, exactly. And now we just have to scale this up because we're going to want to make sure we cut straight through this other one. So we're going to do Z, A, B, highlight, extend. Let's just do like, doesn't even matter. We're going to do like 18 or something. Because we're just going to be using this as a takeaway. We're not using this for anything else. Uh, so we're going to do A, deselect everything and to reselect it again. And now we'll do our object mode to do a Boolean modifier. We're going to get out of that one. So we'll click on this one. Go to modifiers again. We we'll add that Boolean. We're going to hit difference and we're going to select oh wait we don't we haven't had it yet ah what am i doing obviously i gotta bring this down it's got to cut through it perfect now we can do our boolean modifier so click the eyedropper tool and bam now we hit apply now we click on this hit delete and there you have it there goes the hole we needed so now we have the skateboard bearing, 
designed and we have our bottom and top flooring for the bottom shaft of oh, the bottom axes and uh, now we can start actually working on everything so we're gonna add another cylinder we're gonna add two of these now so it's best just since we're in object mode to go ahead and add them we're gonna add cylinder scale 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 it keep scaling just keep scaling all right and then the reason why I'm doing this is because we need to take this one out really probably should have did I probably should have copied that one duplicated it yeah let's, re let's undo this really quick undo the Moline All right, so we're gonna duplicate this. Hit Control, uh, Shift D, X. I mean Z. My mistake. Z. Move that out of the way, and then we can drag this one back down. And then we're going to use a Boolean modifier again. We want the difference. We're gonna select this one. Hit Apply. And it should have been applied. And all I have to do is hit delete. There you have it. So we have the next one. So now we'll go ahead and add the cylinder again. Scale it. Scale it. Scale it. I know it seems like it's taking a lot, guys. But it, it will work out in the future here. I'm sorry if it's taking too long. I appreciate you guys being so patient. And, uh... I think I should just go ahead and end the video here since I mean obviously we don't want to keep you guys on the on here too long I'll just I'll finish this part up really fast and then we'll go ahead and end the video here this will be just part one I'll definitely be looking out for part two of this I'll be working on this for the next few days because I want to make sure I at least get the bottom half going so I can you know start messing with the code and seeing if it worked and everything because I want to get this printed out really I want to do it by tonight Right now I have some uh, feet printing for the other printer, so that way it can kind of be a little standoffish. And uh, so let's just go ahead and finish this one up and then I'll end the video at that point. So one and object mode. So basically it's the same practice over and over again. Just as long as you keep the same pattern, you should actually be able to speed through this really quickly. So if we go back to this side view, we're gonna click that one. Actually, no, we need to go on the opposite side. Uh, what am I doing? There we go. And that's the Z, so we can go ahead and hit that. There you go, so you know exactly where it's at. And then we'll go down to the bottom here. Double tap, double tap. All right, that one and this one. And then we can double check by just kind of tilting it. So see, yep, good. Now we're going to change that to red and hit select on um, sediment and there you have it. So you have both of those. Now we're going to go ahead and grab scale, bring it down. I don't know what this group size should be for this. Um, since it's 22 for the circumference, I don't want to have too much play. So if it's 22, then if we do a, I guess like a 24, maybe? No, that's two. That's only one. Wait, one? Hmm. I'll do a 26. So if it's 22, 24 would be two. Let's just do a 28. We'll do a 28. Bring it down to 28. Okay, let me zoom in. Scale it down a little. Shoot, come on, 28, where you at? There we go. Oh, that's close enough. Well, we zoom in and. I say it's close enough, but I just, I hate not having things accurate. It just irritates me bring this down 
All right, so let's move you over. What? Who are you? What happened? I'm in the right mode, right? Yeah. Maybe when I. I don't know. There it goes. I just want to move over. Zoom in, move over. Now if we scale out too much, scale up. Come on. There it goes. Alright. Now that we have that, one. Okay, so we're at 28. Now we can add this information down into this bottom one so what we're gonna do is go back to object mode and I'm going to hide that with I think it's shift H and then uh, shift J or hmm, shift H I forget how to was it control H okay all H is to okay so we're gonna keep this one and keep this one yeah we'll keep both of those and then hit shift H so any ones that weren't selected will disappear we're basically hiding them so now we got that one we will move up so we can see we want it to go down into this hole I don't know why I keep doing it all right so if we do that view and wireframe, we can actually see that it's a little too big, or at least too tall. So we're going to have to scale that down a little bit. I don't want it to go all the way through. I just trying to, because once we're going to intersect these two parts, connect them together. That's correct. This one and this one. Now I can bring it down. We're going to select all. Bring it up. Ah. Select. Oh, no. Bring it up. I don't know where the point of view is. Okay. We'll just have it touch that line right there. That should be fine. Anyway, so we're at, what is it, 10 millimeters or something? Let's just drag that back over here. 10. Yeah, that's not bad. It's 7 for the bearing, so 10 is probably killing it. We probably just need to bring it down to to, uh, to 7. I'll do 8 because I'm going to try to go in a millimeter deeper. So, got to figure that part out. This is the tricky stuff. So, if I think about this correctly... We'll go ahead and scale down this first to 8, and then intersect everything afterwards. So, A, B, select, drag this down to 8, which show right here, bringing it down, bringing it down. Oh, uh, wait, there we go. Now, A, A, bring it down. And matter of fact, let's get out of here. That, that. We're back in object mode. Shift, uh, control H to bring everything back. This time, we're going to move this up out of the way. 
See, I only move things up. I don't try to like delete them or hide them too often. Because I can just move them out of my area of view without having to worry about moving this position. And uh, we're going to bring this one, not that one. We need to bring this one down. Because this is going to show us how fat this stuff is, how tall. So if we select that one, that one, and that one, we can hide all the rest. Because these be the main ones that we're going to be using here. And uh, so now we can go back into first mode, uh, front view, object mode. Wait, make sure we're selected on the right one. So we'll do, well, let's bring this one down a little more too. I'm going to change the color on this one. Let's do that. Uh, new color. There it goes. That's fine. Well, diffuse uh, intensity was we'll set at that. Can we change the color here? Let me see. What? Uh, I don't care right now. Uh, it's fine. Uh, so we're just going to leave it that color for now so I can see. So we're going to drop that in. See how it just like disappeared. And we kind of want to make sure it's flat. Okay, so if we go back to this mode and we do wireframe, where are we at on here? So that's flat. But is it sitting right in here? Well, it didn't go all the way through, so that's a plus. So I think that would be good. So we'll leave it like that. Because this is going to cut out the shape of it regardless, and then we're not even going to have to worry about it. Uh, so first, we'll go ahead and do our boolean modifier to add this one to this. So we need to click on this one. We're going to we're already in object mode, so we just add the modifier and uh, boolean intersect union. So we're going to be doing for this one. And we're going to add these two buddies together. And then we'll hit apply. And now we can select this one and delete it. And see now both of those are together. They're one solid shape. Now we have to select that one, do another Boolean modifier to subtract this portion out. So we're going to hit difference click on that one hit apply and there you have it so now we hit delete and there goes the center where we will punch in our hole for the rod and everything so that one will be just riding on there and then uh, if we go ahead and hit alt H we can bring everything else back and uh, this one should shit should sit perfectly fine inside that circle right there so right in that slot let's go ahead and change the what? there we go new color alright diffuse can I change? Yeah, we can change the color. Let's make it a yellow. Yeah. What do you guys think? Yellow? Yellow sounds pretty good, right? Yeah. Alright, so we're going to drop that down and sit right there. It's looking alright. I'm going to make this one red. Intensity. And make that red. So we can see what's going on here. So our yellow. If we can see it. I just want to make sure that when it touches. It's not messing up nothing. And bam. That's where it would sit at. Right there. Uh, let's get out of that. Yeah that looks pretty good.
Okay, so we have both of those now. Now we have to get another cylinder. I know there's a lot of cylinders we're adding here, guys. Uh, so now we're going to get another cylinder, scale it down, scale it down, scale it down. This one you're going to make an 8 because we need to make the shaft now. Bring that up. Alright, so now we're going to just have this one selected only and hide all the other ones. So now we can go into object mode, first view, move this over here, bring that over here, go to side view, not that side, the other side. I'm just messing up here, trying to make sure. Okay, change that to blue. That's how I like it done. Top view. We're doing individual vertices, not all of them. Just select that one and that one. Now we're going to do the red. There we go. What? Why isn't it showing up? Oh, I didn't select the other side. What? It's weird. Interesting. I don't know why I'm having so much trouble with it now. Selecting the right vertice and all. Let's just move upward. Click. Uh, control that side. There we go. Perfect. Now, scaling it is what we need to do next. Select all. Scale it to eight, because that's what we're using. We are only using eight. There you go. Bring it down to an eight. Come on, eight. There we go. We can zoom in a little bit, see if we can get that closer to the eight we want. Oh, come on. There it goes. Now. We have the eight. I'm gonna do select that, and we're gonna just drag this thing all the way out. I don't even care how big. And just drag that sucker right out of there. Okay, a hundred and something is fine. Anyway, uh, now that we have that, we're gonna go back into edit mode. Uh, ob yeah, object mode. My mistake. And uh. Alt-H to bring everything back. And then we're going to drag this downward. No, 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 no. I want to just select this one and drag this one downward. Let's see, that bolt lane modifier is going to do great wonders with all this. And we can do... Let's just duplicate this just to be safe. Shift, D, Z... On the Z plane, bring that up. So now we want to take this one away from here. So we're going to do a, another Boolean modifier. Do the difference again. This time we're selecting our shaft. I don't think I selected it. I gotta get out of this object move stuff. There you go. Yeah, it was selected. Okay. Anyway, now we're going to do difference, hit apply, we're done with that, now we're going to delete this one, X, delete, and you can see that there is a complete hole through there, and the same thing needs to happen with this top one, so yeah, it's looking good, we're getting there guys, I pretty much got left, I'm left off where I was with this one. The only difference is this one has the stepper motor and the ramps board, which I can just import that into the other one if I need to look at the, you know, shapes and everything. 
but for the most part it's in there and uh we, we pretty much got that so i mean i'm sorry i was taking so long i know that this is a very long video and i'm trying really hard to make sure they're not but i mean obviously there's a lot of information to go around here so uh, take it with a grain of salt guys but like i mentioned uh if you guys are liking this video please like subscribe let me know what you think and uh if uh you guys want to check out any of those videos i had beforehand uh, about uh, blender they will definitely be in my channel so you can definitely look those up and uh next week or next two weeks or so i'll definitely start doing some live streaming ish about uh blender and the things i'm making so I'll probably be starting off with this mainly this is just the first you know inter iteration of the whole six axis arm bot thing so uh my next few videos will definitely be uh something along these lines as well uh, we'll just be kind of progressively getting closer and closer to getting this one finished and you guys will be seeing it firsthand of me doing everything and then i'll talk to you guys about all the uh, pros and cons and we'll definitely come together and see exactly what's going on with all this i hope you guys are liking the video like i mentioned my name is legit lee and i'm signing out